the string. Pull the string. Where the hell do I even begin with this one? Obviously, it's basically impossible to pick just five forgotten slashers. I mean... He's probably a sociopath. Shut up. Mother's boys. I want my family back. But when making this list, I focused on mainly two rules. One, how does the film hold up? I'm trying to pick flicks I haven't seen in a while to get a perspective with some fresh eyes. And I'm also comparing them to bona fide classics of the genre, even though I probably shouldn't. And rule number two, what's the body count and how creative were the kills? And of course, I couldn't have all this fun alone, so I'm having my trusty internet companion Justin over at Movie Watch Daily help me out with a spooky pick of his own. Let me know if you like this kind of stuff and I'll do more. Oh, and subscribe. Or else. Number five, Mikey from Mikey. Remember, Jason and Freddy were kids once, too. Mikey. These kind of movies are always going to be a hallmark of the genre. I mean, killer kids? What could be more horrifying? The film actually barely got taken off the video nasties list recently due to inspiring some actual crimes, which is an unwanted but very real hallmark of certain slasher flicks throughout the years, unfortunately. This one sticks out mainly due to me being around the same age as the main actor Brian Bonsall, who plays the titular slasher Mikey. The film tells the story of a homicidal foster kid who seems to just kill everybody he runs into. <laughs> In the film, we see one particular instance where he gets adopted and proceeds to kill off the family and anybody else who gets in his way, one by one. There's not too many creative kills, um, most of them being from electrocution, oh, and a pretty brutal beating with a baseball bat early on. We also get a few bow and arrow kills, which always make me cringe. Ugh. Ouch. The marketing focused mainly on dogging on Chucky, even getting a poster featuring that buddy doll thing, and he was even called a homicidal dentist a menace, for good reasons. We get a smash up finale here too. And no shit, Mikey gets kind of creepy. Put that down, it's not a toy. That's what you say. Body count wise, it's an absolute bloodbath. The opening scene resulting in the annihilation of three family members in like a minute or something. Mikey definitely wins the gold when it comes to child killers in my opinion. But if he had faced the big boys, well, he'd probably get fucked up. Number four, Dr. Kessler from I Madman. Is it fact, fiction, or a nightmare escaped from between the pages of a hardcover? Hardcover. This movie always seems to get a lot of hate, <laughs> mainly for being cheesy or poorly acted or boring or how about fuck you. I always thought it was a fun little cheesy romp. I enjoy nearly all of Tibor Takic's films though. Hilariously, um, here Tibor kinda reworks and reuses a minion from his Gate series, which is pretty funny, look at this. And here we get a pretty cool story. Secondhand bookstore clerk Virginia Clayton becomes absorbed in the book I Madman by Malcolm Brand. In the book, the deranged and deformed Dr. Kessler is obsessed with beautiful actress Anna Templer and kills victims, sewing part of each victim's face onto his own. But as Virginia continues to read, someone starts to emulate the killings in the book, targeting the people around her. Ooh. We get genre legend here, Clayton Ronner, having it up the only way he can. Love that guy. This movie used to scare the shit out of me, mainly due to Kessler's appearance. That, combined with the film's supernatural elements, is why I put him on the list. Being a very original take on this slasher. Kind of like a Freddy mixed with Leatherface mixed with uh, Hannibal Lecter. But as far as kills go, they're basically non-existent. Happening mainly in the stories we see from the book. But Dr. Kessler does some real slashery shit here. 
But don't get me wrong, the kills we do get are still pretty badass. I mean, the guy is taking pieces of his victim's face with a razor and sewing them onto his own face. And we see him slowly change throughout the film, which is pretty cool. Another pretty original aspect for the slasher movie, in the, especially in the 80s, and even giving off some Candyman vibes. The film really is a fun time, having one of the strangest finales I can recall in a movie like this. But, you know, if he had to face the big boys, well, he'd probably get fucked up. Number three, Mad Jake from Blood Salvage. Strange things are happening at Jake's junkyard. Help people's my business, huh? Up in. Great. Blood salvage. If Jake can't fix it, it's been dead too long. Blood salvage was produced by Vander Holyfield. I just thought I had to mention that. That's pretty weird. The film tells the tale of a hillbilly family who abducts people to sell their organs, led by the father and mad genius, Mad Jake, when he becomes fascinated with a wheelchair-bound beauty pageant contestant, he takes it upon himself to help out. It's not so much about body count here, but mainly how sadistic Jake is and how his family are, keeping victims alive to harvest their organs in a shed near the house which is guarded by an alligator, which is a fate worse than death, in my opinion. But as far as kills go, we still get some, and they are brutal. You can learn all about this film on episode 11 of Staunch on Film, link in description. And of course, I highly recommend this one, and I always wanted to see more of Mad Jake. Damn shame we didn't get a sequel, he is badass. But you know, if he had to face the big boys... He might hold his own for a while, but he'd probably get fucked up. Before I reveal my top pick, I'm handing it off to Justin over at Movie Watch Daily. Go and subscribe to him and join him for his 31 Days of Halloween, which is going on right now, where he has a new video out every day for October, because he is insane. What's up, Justin here. Now my pick for Obscure Slasher takes us back to the glorious 80s, 1985 to be exact, to talk about the amazing Nail Gun Massacre. Now this ridiculous 1985 micro-budget slasher movie was made and directed by two guys who never really went on to do anything else after this. This was their only movie, and you can kind of see why after watching it. This movie definitely falls into that so bad, it's good category. The kills are terribly shot, the acting is awful, and the premise is ridiculous. All the trappings of an amazing uh, so bad it's good slasher. The movie opens up right off the bat with something pretty bad happening to our female character, but don't worry, she goes back to get her revenge on all these nasty dudes throughout the movie. Now our killer is armed with nothing but a nail gun, a motorcycle helmet, and a weird voice changer that makes her sound like Robocop and Terminator. There's also some amazing one-liners. There's a scene where a guy is peeing in the woods, he turns around and pees on the killer's leg, at which she replies, now you piss me off. The movie is filled with amazing moments from beginning to end. There's 17 kills. There's only a couple that are off screen. You see most of them on screen. And of course the special effects are terrible and they are amazing. I recommend anybody who's a fan of obscure, ridiculous 80s slashers to definitely seek out 1985's Nail Gun Massacre. But you know, if she had to face the big guy as well, she'd probably get fucked up. So much for the Me Too movement. Happy Halloween! Ah, that's a good pick, you son of a bitch. As stated before, it's impossible to do a definitive list like this, so we're thinking of doing a follow-up sometime. As far as other lists, I'm thinking things like Top 5 Forgotten Supernatural Killers, or Top 5 Forgotten Monster Movies, or something like that. Let me know what you want to see down below, and subscribe to Staunch TV. Okay. Number one, Albert from I Dismember Mama. The official synopsis goes, Albert tried to kill his rich, snobby mother once. Then he was institutionalized. Now he's escaped. Albert is after his mother again, and he will torture and kill anything that lays in the way. Damn. Albert may be there. Albert was young, intelligent, handsome, 
and sick, very sick. Poor Albert, do you know what you are looking for? Are you living in the Prepare yourself for the most severe shock waves ever encountered on the screen. For the uninitiated, I dismember Mama is a bona fide exploitation classic, literally bearing all the hallmarks of 70s exploitation film. A disjointed script, nudity, violence against women. <laughs> There's even a completely out of place theme song montage thing going on smack dab in the middle of the film <laughs> and was even released under multiple titles. The film is notable for having barf baggies at its double feature premiere. I think we've all seen this classic ad at some inside? point, right? Is this TV? Channel 12. Oh, yeah. Did you get sick? Oh, wow, I got sick. I got sick all over. Oh, wow, really far out. <laughs> oh, why didn't you use your upchuck cup? Oh, it wasn't big enough. I had to use my purse. You want to see? No, no. Oh, wow. This is Howard far Scott out. about to upchuck in my upchuck cup. Groovy. A double explosion of bloody terror, blood spattered bride, and I dismember mama. And again, not much of a body count here, but the few we do get, even the ones off screen, are fucking horrifying. Really going all in with the realistic serial killer approach. After one heartless murder, Albert takes the now parentless daughter on a road trip where they bond, and Albert sees a glimpse of humanity. Again, horrifying. And the film was surprisingly well acted, even though it's you know, admittedly kind of boring at times. I recommend this for any fan of the slasher genre, as it holds a very odd tone all the way throughout, really getting under your skin at times, all leading up to one of the most visually pleasing finales I've ever seen from one of these types of exploitation films, I mean. Someone obviously gave a shit here. But you know, um, if he had to face the big boys, yeah, he'd get fucked up. Thanks for joining me this staunch ween Plenty of spooky stuff coming this month. Subscribe to stay notified. Oh, and don't forget to check out Movie Watch Daily. Pull the string! Pull the string! <laughs>